I'm going to attempt, try, to continue something that we started last Sunday. And uh, what I'm attempting to do is build a biblical understanding of the kingdom of God. To build a biblical understanding of the kingdom of God. To build a biblical understanding of the kingdom of God. And our responsibility or our placement in the, this massive thing called the kingdom of God. And last Sunday, we talked about a number of things that relate to that, a number of pieces that relate to that. We talked about uh, understanding the kingdom, understanding this, and we referred to what's been taught over the many, many years now about the mountains of the Lord out of Deuteronomy chapter 7. How many of you know we have enemies today? Are you listening? We have enemies today. We have enemies in every arena. We have enemies that are our own enemies, personal, assigned to us to bring havoc and mess in our life. How many of you hear that? You have an enemy that's called your flesh. Hello. And we have the orchestrator of all wicked schemes and plans against us, which is Lucifer, amen, Satan. And, uh, but we have enemies. We have multiple enemies. Are you hearing me? And nations have enemies. Not only does the Christian have an enemy, but the nation has enemies. How I mean, you know this nation has enemies? And there are enemies uh, of other nations. Now, and in that concept, thought, process, um, we need to take a picture here, if you were, and understand what the Lord was saying and doing when he spoke to the Israelites out of chapter 7 of Deuteronomy. Now, when the Lord your God brings you into the land which you go to possess, and he cast out many nations before you, and he names those nations that he's going to cast out before them. This is God bringing the children of Israel into the promises that he had given to them, the promised land. So he's clearly defining some things for them, and he's telling them that they have enemies. Now, God says these nations are greater and they're mightier. It means greater in number and mightier in all of their work and all of their goings and doings. They are mightier, okay? And you need to know that. You need to kind of get that. And then he says in verse 2, And when the Lord your God delivers them over to you, not if, but when, you shall conquer them and utterly destroy them. Later he says he didn't let them do it all at once. He let them work through it a little bit because he didn't want them to boast in their own effort. So he took them one at a time. He let them overcome some of these things. How many of you know there are enemies against your success? There's enemies against your work. See, there's enemies about us in every area of life, and those enemies have a mission. They have an assignment. They have a, a, a boldness. They have a purpose to come against us. And yet they pass laws every day that we can't do anything. So the church is in the world, not of the world, but we are forced to eat at their table. How many of you at times get tired of eating at their table? Now, the Bible says that we will present the nations of the world to the Lord as his possessions. We are in Matthew 28 where it says we are, it's the great, you know, uh, uh, thing that call that God gave to the world, to the church world, to go out and make disciples of all nations. We've relegated the gospel down to individuals. And the Bible says, when he even taught us to pray, he said, pray this way, our Father, not your Father, our Father. Hello? And we've, we've brought down this whole thing about the gospel where the nation is really not included Yet God refers to in Deuteronomy 7 and all through Scripture, Revelation, etc. He was talking about the nation. These spirits, these two spirits, fear and terror, these two spirits are freely having 
their heyday and being released through something that we need to look at over the air. The prince of the power of the air. Through the various news outlets that we often find ourselves bowing before and looking at and getting so much of the source of our information. Are you hearing me? So this first mountain that needs to come down is the mountain of the media. We need to topple the king at the top of the mountain that rules through Baal and ru rules through Jezebel and brings terror and fear to the world. Can I jump ahead for a minute? I'll come back. Let me give you so some of you that can't retain things for very long, you'll come with me. Do you know before Ben Laden was killed, he had no voice unless Al Jazeera or CNN spoke for him? You would have never, ever known who he was, the cave he hung out in. You would have never known anything had the media not been his voice. So when he sent his little vomit out in the tape and had the whole world just like almost the newest release on the new movie coming out. Oh my God, did you hear? Ben Laden's going to talk from the cave. People went home from work, hurried to the television. Bin Laden's going to speak. And then after he spoke, the fools went, oh my God, oh my God, let's build a bunker. <laughs> Satan constantly sets scenarios up that distract us from what should be the true battlefield. Now that's what he wants. He wants us off the battlefield that's the true battlefield and he wants us engaged in the wrong battle. Listening to lies and fear. Terrorism isn't effective without the cooperation of the international, come on, or the intentional or not media. Terrorism goal is terror and its needs are a spokesman. This is from Charles Finney. Great care should be taken that the press should be improved to no purpose contrary to the interests of this work. We read uh, that when God fought against Caesarea for the deliverance of the oppressed church that they handled the pen of the writer came to the help of the Lord. Now, these guys wrote really strange when they wrote, so it better says it here. Uh, out of Ephraim was there a root of them against Amalek after the Benjamin among the people out of the Makar came down governors and out of Zebulun they that handled the pen of the writers. The enemy that they were dealing with was the pen of the writers. If I were to read to you today out of Finney's book he says that the greatest hindrance to revival is the unsanctified media that plays down what God just did last night. Our role as citizens of the kingdom of God must be to bring good news. How do you know we can bring good news? Philippians 4.8. Can you go there? Philippians 4.8. We are going to be people that bring good news. How many of you want to change the atmosphere of an environment, of a city, of an area by changing the news? Hello? Can you imagine if every news broadcast was required to add 20% of the good stories that happens? Can you imagine what would go on? Faith would start to happen. People would hear good stories. People would be excited. Their ratings would go up. Philippians 4.8. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are good report, if there is any virtue, if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Can you hear that? We may report on the disasters and the uh, tragedies of war, yes, but there must be a silver lining that we can find in these stories. Hello? Romans 2, 4, the goodness of God is what leads to repentance. Hello? The goodness of God is what leads to repentance. 
2 Corinthians 10, 4 and 5, the weapons of our warfare. They are not carnal but mighty in God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Oh, I love Proverbs 25, 25. Turn there in your Bibles. Put it on the screen, guys. As cold water to a weary soul, so is good news from a far country. Isn't that a good statement? Isaiah 52, 7. This is who you are. This is what we are. Look at your feet for a minute. It's the only time in your existence that anybody's going to call them beautiful. That's why a peacock has beautiful feathers so you don't look at its feet. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news and who proclaims peace and who brings glad tidings of good things. How many of you hear that? That if we could stand in this city and speak to this city every day, blessings. If we could announce every day, if we could announce and say, like Job, you would get up this morning and declare and proclaim your day to be blessed. Do you know? How many of you do that with your own life? How many of you know it changes the way you act, doesn't it? How many of you know if we did that every day for this city, we could change the city? We announced over the airways some years ago, all the way around this block, that this city of Baltimore belonged to Jesus. We saw crime drop 35%. We saw things change, saints, because we announced it over our city. There's people today that don't want this city blessed. And those that rule the mountain of the airways control what's done in the city. But Isaiah said, we're supposed to go up on the top of the mountain, those of us with good news, and proclaim the, that good news to the city. Here's what we should do. We should do something. We should start training up our children to go into these mediums. Teach them how to step into those mediums. Don't send your kids to aimlessly go to some university. Aim those children to go into some form of one of these governments and begin to get in there until they can become the head and not the tail. 